All praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly, holy, almighty creator of infinity, eternity, the universe, and all there is. This is revelations.unveiled.detroit. Hello, family. We are back together again, and I am here in the humblest fashion proudly to be before you to make presentation and my continuous salutations of serenity and solace for your peace, care, and safety to the 12 tribes of the house of Israel scattered abroad into the four winds of the earth, as well as my brothers and sisters of the world, the melanated and moors, the original man and children of God, the sovereigns and sojourners, the copper colored, the colored, and people of color, the natives, Negroes, and niggas, the aboriginals and indigenous, the Afro, African Americans, and blacks, the descendants of slaves, and those conquered and colonized. Oh, yes, and as we convene and converge in the revelations that unveiled Dr. Troy Den, we are once again family here to extend and expand that of our spiritual, mental, and intellectual understandings as we now, those of us who understand, recognize, and acknowledge that we are the children of the covenant, we are the people of the book. And so tonight, family, as we are together in safety, comfort, joy, and love, and we are looking into the windows of the soul of our fellow beings. We are ready to receive the heat and the fire of the wisdoms of the word of the world and of the holy power. And tonight, family, we will be examining the term anti-Semitism and its definition per the Office of International Religious Freedom of the United States Department of State. And so family, as we go through this document, we are going to have commentary, review and reflection so we can determine the actual definition of the so-called term anti-Semitism. And we begin. The Department of State has used a working definition along with examples of anti-Semitism since 2010. On May 26, 2016, the 31 member states of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, of which the United States is a member, adopted a non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism as its plenary in Bucharest. This definition is consistent with and builds upon the information obtained in the 2010 State Department definition. As a member of the IHRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, the United States now uses this working definition and has encouraged other governments and international organizations to use it as well. In Bucharest, May 26, 2016, in the spirit of the Stockholm Declaration that states, with humanity still scarred by anti-Semitism and xenophobia, the international community shares a solemn responsibility to fight those evils. The Committee on Anti-Semitism and Holocaust Denial, called the IHRA Plenary in Budapest 2015, to adopt the following working definition of anti-Semitism. On 26 May 2016, the Plenary in Bucharest decided to adopt the following non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. 
all right family so right there let's get into the definition the word jew is short for judah the descendants of judah are referred to as jews judah is one tribe of the nation of the house of israel israelite nation judah tribe descendants jews rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-semitism are directed toward jewish or non-jewish individuals and or their property toward jewish community institutions and religious facilities all right so now we have the term jewish which means to be like a descendant of judah it does not mean they are descendants of judah and so now the working definition covers a perception that can be expressed as hatred physical damage and property damage or to community institutions of the Jewish people. To guide IHRA in its works, the following examples may serve as illustrations. Manifestations may include the targeting of the state of Israel conceived as a Jewish collective all right family so from the outset israel is not a state israel is a man israel's original name was jacob he wrestled with the angel and was blessed with the name of israel a prince who has power with the most high he had 12 sons which sprang 12 tribes individual tribes collectively into one nation the house of israel the tribe of judah is the so-called application these people use they are not of the tribe of judah they are jewish they try to be like the tribe of judah they are european converts to the religion of judaism that has nothing to do with the Holy Scripture. However, criticism of Israel similar to that leveled against any other country cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism frequently charges Jews with conspiring to harm humanity. And it is often used to blame Jews for why things go wrong. It is expressed in speech, writing, visual forms, and action, and employs sinister stereotypes and negative character traits. So family, if we employ our spiritual eyes and depth, that paragraph actually is a description of the so-called blacks here in America. Let's reread it with the mind frame that it's speaking to the black collective of America. Criticism of Israel similar to that level against any other country cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. Okay. Anti-Semitism frequently charges that Jews, blacks, with conspiring to harm humanity. And it is often used to blame Jews or blacks for why things go wrong. It, ex it is expressed in speech, in writing, visual forms and action and employs sinister stereotypes and negative character traits. Wow, family. Was that a declaration 
hidden in parable for the actual real descendants of the tribe of Judah? It is certainly applicable. Contemporary examples of anti-Semitism in public life, the media, schools, the workplace, and in the religious sphere could take into account the overall context, include, but are not limited to, calling for, aiding, or justifying the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view of religion. Wow, family. So, even though this document was crafted for the Jewish people, now, if we look in depth and apply it to the actual Negroes, the descendants of slaves on American shores, the context of anti-Semitism in public life could call for aiding and justifying the killing or harming of Jews, substitute that, of blacks in the name of a radical ideology, democracy, or an extremist view of religion, Christianity. Wow. Next point, making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as a collective, such as especially, but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, the economy, government, or other societal institutions. So now family, there's a dual application here. Making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations against Jews or blacks as such or the power of Jews as a collective. Now, the blacks here in America have no collective power. They are a splintered and fractured people of varying ideologies, philosophies, ideologies, political factions and beliefs. However, the world recognizes that when we do unify under cause or action, we are a threatening force as a collective. On the other side, the Jewish people, whose real biblical name is Amalek or the Ashkenazi, they have a political force which is unmatched which is unfettered, which cannot be denied. They have the political financial forces to dictate and control political policy within various governments globally. It is no lie. It is no false accusation. It is no slander. It is no libel. If you do research and look at the heads, the owners, the chairmen, or the majority profiteers of companies of media of industries of the economy at the higher echelons of government and other societal institutions these Amalekite Ashkenaz Jewish people are there at the forefront controlling those strings of those industries accusing Jews as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single Jewish person or group or even for acts committed by non-Jews. That is a statement for the so-called Negro, the Black, the Afro, the African American in America. Being accused as a people for real or imagined wrongdoings committed by a single so-called black person or a group 
and even acts committed not by black people. This is a document of duality of the spirit and of the mind that can reach those inner depths of understanding. Denying the fact, scope, mechanism, as for example, gas chambers, or intentionally of the genocide of the Jewish people at the hands of the National Socialist Germany and of its supporters and accomplices during World War II, the Holocaust. So family, being anti-Semitic is if you express opposition to what occurred to the Jewish people during the years of World War II, if you deny the Holocaust, if you provide evidence that contradicts or is in opposition to, you are anti-Semitic. This event of the Holocaust cannot be denied. It cannot be researched against the supporters of it and the instigators of it, the echelons of higher order in Germany, are to be blamed, are to be demonized, are to be captured, jailed, and or killed. That is a non-negotiable item. So family, we must now actually dwell into the portions of that act, the acts of World War II. Now we must put on the examination of the Holocaust so we can determine which way it actually went through the propaganda given to us throughout the history or could there be an alternate tale as is always found out in the commissions of war accusing the Jewish people as a whole or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust so if you converse with a Jewish person and begin to question the inner details of the Holocaust and that Jewish person becomes or grows into an offense even amongst the general dialogue you can be labeled anti-Semitic accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. Is that an accusation? Do not the Amalekite Ashkenaz, wherever they reside in the world, have dual citizenship that if at any given moment's notice, they can leave whichever country they reside in and find nationality, residential status in the created state of Israel as done by the Balfour Declaration. Denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination, for example, by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. So, what Jewish self-determination has been denied? A state was created for them to exist as a group. The owners of the majority portions of your media your television industry, your educational industry, your religious industry. It could sound like a monopoly administrated by the Ashkenazi people. Using symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism, claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel or Israelis. So family, 
let's take into account what about the symbols of the noose? What about the symbols of burning crosses? What about the symbols of chains and fetters and masks and electric chairs and stripes and prison cells and whips and dismemberment and rape and torture all that which is of the Amer- the American historical platform this has been done to the true children and descendants of the tribe of Judah here this is a definition that should be legally binding for those people bought here in chains and bondage under prophetic biblical declaration applying double standards by requiring of it a behavior not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation such as you must operate in the name of your captor the language of your captor you must be taught by your captor in your educational curriculum in your religious curriculum you must assimilate and be non-negotiable in surrendering any heritage or idealism of nationhood of yourselves that is the call against the so-called black people drawing comparisons of contemporary Israeli policy to that of the Nazis so it is anti-semitic if you take the book of law of the Nazi operations and put it next to the book of law of Israeli policy Israeli a false name just like Jewish a false title the people of the book are Israelites from the man named Israel and it is 12 tribes from Asher to Zebulon Judah is only one tribe of the nations holding Jewish people collectively responsible for the actions of the state of Israel that is utterly a ridiculous statement family it, who is administrating who is in political leadership of the nation or the state of Israel today if something goes wrong who would be the collective group of people to place blame on so if a Jewish person is living in China and the Jewish people in the state of Israel want to bomb all people surrounding them do we hold the Jew in China responsible of course not but does the Jew in China have any empathy or sympathy for non-Jews the ones he lives amongst as the state of Israel commits heinous crimes against humanity anti-semitic acts are criminal when they are so defined by law for example denial of the Holocaust or distribution of anti-semitic materials in some countries so family listen to the wickedness as we examine and understand and we assess is there a denial of the global slave trade that has taken place over the last half millennium are the effects are the fruits of that global slave trade denied brushed aside 
told to be forgotten? Yes. However, the Ashkenazi Amalekite Jewish people want to make it a crime if you deny the Holocaust event that occurred during the years of World War II. Criminal acts are anti-Semitic. When the targets of the attacks, whether they are people or property, such as buildings, schools, places of worship, and cemeteries, are selected because they are or are perceived to be Jewish or linked to Jews. Another applicable statement to the Negroes of America, where you are commonly attacked by common people, by the policing forces of the municipalities, by the so-called system of justice to which you are the majority target. You are targeted as people, your property taken, sieged, burned, destroyed, repossessed, your buildings, your schools, your churches, your places of rest, all bombed, desecrated, and brutalized by the various hands of the oppressive system of the American society. And they are against the Negro as we are selected as the prime target of their incarceration and modern day slavery. Anti-Semitic discrimination is the denial of Jews of opportunities or services available to others and is illegal in many countries. Another applicable statement to the actual people of bondage scattered from their original homeland and arrived on the American shores. The denial of education, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness under institutionalized government system for 200 plus years and another informal system of segregation, discrimination, torture, disenfranchisement, denial of government systems and services and opportunities, all legislated by the higher political powers of which the Jewish Ashkenazi people were a willing and financing participant. So family, we will take this term anti-Semitic. All of us of the 12 tribes of the house of Jacob who know who we are as we continue to be the light of shining to our brothers and sisters of the world as we come into this burgeoning tsunami of the awakening acknowledging the holy spirit of the holy power creator of all awakening his children of the covenant bringing us back to the law of light the law of truth as we await the return of the holy anointed messiah to resettle the earth as he purges it in flames and sets up the eternal kingdom for the children of Israel. Defining anti-Semitism as by the Office of International Religious Freedom, a definition for the blacks, so-called Negro and African Americans here of the United States and family we shall continue our review we shall continue our extension expansion and expounding we are the nation of the book and until we are together again I love you I love you I love you this is revelations.unveil.detroit.